Yo, what's up, guys? This is D Brown with Trackheads. I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Trackheads. So, we have just finished round one of the women's 100 meter dash for the 2024 Paris Olympics. Um, it was early in the morning. I unfortunately did not watch it when it was live, but I did catch it when I was actually up, like up and awake, and was able to actually see what was going on. Um, very, 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 very interesting. A lot of co a couple of things happened since the last time that we spoke about the women's 100 with my predictions. If you haven't seen that, definitely check it out. But um, for the women's predictions, I had Shakari Richardson, Sharika Jackson, and then I believe I had Melissa Jefferson. And a couple of dark horses, I had uh, you know, um, I had Shelly Ann Frazier Price, um, and just a couple of people like that. So as you know, since the last time I spoke to you guys, uh, Sharika Jackson has uh, fallen out. She she decided not to. She dropped the one hundred. Um, which was pretty telling. I think I said in the video, if, you know, hopefully she's injury free, but that cramp that she displayed uh, in her 200 from a couple of weeks ago, it didn't look like no cramp that, you know, it didn't look like the the kind of cramp that um, was going to have her running the 100 uh, in like a 10-7, 10-6 in about two, three weeks. So um, I think they, they, had, they had her drop the 100 to kind of preserve her legs and kind of take like a, a little bit of a gamble. Um, because in my opinion, if you can't handle the, the, the top speed of a 100, um, you know, coming off the curve of a 200, twice the distance where you're expected to maintain the same kind of velocity. I don't know. I have no idea. I think they're just trying to buy more time. Maybe she needs a, you know, extra couple of days to kind of let her hamstring recover and heal. Only time will tell, to be honest. So, um, but a couple of things I noticed, you know, um, in, in, just in terms of going into the semifinals, I think the most important thing to view when you're looking at these 100 meter dashes for the women is who has the best rhythm and who made their times look so easy, who made their, you know, their race look very easy for the time that they were showed. So, um, of course, we actually carry Richardson. She looked the easiest. Um, she did fix her start. She had a very good push pattern. It probably helped that no one was really in her heat to kind of give her any static, even though she's not the kind of athlete, in my opinion, that uh, if someone is fast next to her, she kind of gets inconsistent. Um, but like I said, her pushing, her push pattern was really well. Very beautiful from 40 to 60s, from 60 to 80. I mean, she lands right under her center of mass. She pushes really well. Her hips are, are very forward. For someone who's only listed as like five foot or five foot one or five foot two or, you know, very, very small in terms of her frame, she produces so much power. Her range of motion looks great. Hips look tall. I mean, she runs like she's not five two or five one. Runs very beautiful gait. Um, like I said, lands right under her center of mass. And you can just tell the impacts and, and, and the force in which she hits the ground is so fast, but so explosive. Um, I, I have a feeling her 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 squats are pretty heavy, um, you know, in terms of her body to weight ratio. But like I said, the way she was hitting the ground was so beautiful. That was probably the easiest 10-9 I've seen um, in a while. Um, you know, I saw, I saw Julian Alford, uh, you know, and her race looked good as well. Of course, she's a very powerful athlete, but she looked like she was someone who built up so much momentum in the first part of her, you know, 40, 50, 60 meters and was just able to cruise in and maintain that velocity all the way through um, and ran 10-9 as well. Um, of course, you know, because of her style of racing, she's more of a very like powerful athlete. It didn't look as pretty as Shakira Richardson, but nonetheless, it did it did the job. Um, very powerful athlete, as you could tell um, with, with the way that she runs. Um, who else did I see? Someone who else who impressed me was Daryl Nieter, Daryl Daryl Nita um, from Great Britain. Um, she looked very great. She looked very good. Um, her season's best or her personal best is 1090, 1090. I believe she went 1092. I mean, just looked really, really great, really open um, from 60 to 80 to 80 to 100. I mean, just it was so beautiful to watch her gate kind of uh, open up. You know, she's been running a lot of fast 200s, a lot of 22 threes, fours, fives. Um, so it's very impressive to really see her, you know, once she gets her momentum and builds that up, <clears throat> excuse me, in the first 20, 30 meters to really see her legs, um, to really see her gate open up, her hips open up. And she looked, she had a little, kind of a little like a Great Britain Usain Bolt going on, you know, she, she that was looked like a really smooth 10-9. Um, in my personal opinion, it, it seems like she's in really good shape. I'm hoping that she's able to, you know, qualify all the way through the semifinals because, um, like I said, it was so close to her personal best. Either she's ready to go 10-8 or, uh, you know, uh, 
or is she's gonna just stay consistent all the way through or she could just be going in reverse and run 11 flat this in the semifinals. I think that she could continue to drop down just because she has a better base. Like I said, she ran 10, two, 10, three pretty, pretty early in the season. So I think she's in pretty good shape. Um, Dina Asher Smith looked pretty good too, was uh, running in a heat with, uh, let me let me see if I can pronounce her name right. Eva Swoboda, um, very, 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 uh, you know, powerful athlete uh a 60 one of the few 60 meter women that actually ran under seven seconds um and they both look good they were running pretty much stride for stride in, in in some of their runs so it was really great to see them they looked really smooth they looked like they were damn near holding hands through the line and i, I think they both ran like 11 something like that 11 i believe um if my memory serves me correctly um I also saw Melissa Jefferson. She looked pretty good as well. She looked very open, but she looked kind of tense at the same time. It could be that this is her first, like, Olympics. You know, she wants to make sure she qualifies. But I think as long as she, like... Well, okay, so one thing that I really saw, if I'm really looking with, like, a coach's eye, was that in her last maybe, like, 70, 80 meters, like, she was building up so much momentum in the front side of her race that I feel like she... And she, her transition was good, but she didn't finishing, she didn't finish transitioning her hips forward from 60 to 70 to 80. So she was kind of leaning forward a little bit and her gait was very open, but I feel like she was overstriding a little bit. So, I mean, if you watch the video again in slow motion, you can kind of see it. But, um, I think her coach, um, who's Dennis Mitchell, if, if, if he were to say anything to her, it's probably just to relax and just ride her hips and bring her hips forward from 60 to 100 and really just make sure she lands under her. So if something that Shakari Richardson does really, really well after Shakari uh, transitions and she gets nice and tall, those hips get pushed forward and she's able to use her hips a lot more efficiently and her glutes a lot more efficiently to strike the ground. Melissa was kind of a little bit too far forward in my personal opinion and i mean she was able to run a pretty solid time i think she also went like 10 9 or, or 11 flat or whatever the case is but again to be a little bit more efficient <clears throat> and make sure that her strikes are well timed and and she stretch and she's like um hitting the ground in the right spots i think she just has to transition those hips a little bit more again just you know small details but who who am i who am i so next person that i i saw was uh talu who i did not even have on my dark horse pick at all just because she's been relatively quiet she ran some pretty solid races at the beginning of the year um this is probably one of her first years that she's really just been very low-key um, in the past, she's run so many races because, um, again, there's not really much competition in her country. So, you know, her being the number one athlete in her country, she's able to kind of go around the country and, and, and go into these high caliber races, make her money and then go back home. <laughs> I think this year she's been a lot more low key, a lot more like, you know, she runs her races, runs her 10 eights, maybe even a 10 seven pop out and then go back home. Um, so, you know, she hasn't been as present. Um, as of lately in these past couple races or if she has it's been like low-key things um, So I'm really you know for her to pop out with a 10-8 wasn't a surprise I'm just hoping that she's able to maintain that but I mean she looked really good stride was really open looked really explosive Didn't look like it took a lot of effort from her at all. So it was really cool to see um, I'm hoping that she's able to keep that um, and hopefully go down to 10-7 and she's looking to go get a medal uh, Shelly Ann Frazier price looked uh, really great as well um, again she just did her job, pushed out. She was in the heat with Talu, so Talu went ten eight. Um, she, or excuse me, yeah, she no, yeah, Talu went ten eight seven. Uh, she went ten nine and some change, I believe. But she looked like someone who, again, ran pretty much to forty, transitioned, and then just bounced and maintained. Um, and like I said, because she's kind of like Shakara Richardson in a way that because her form is so pristine, um, she looks a lot taller. She's damn near five foot, same as Shakari. Um, but she she lands in on the balls of her feet and, and lands under her center of mass and she just appears so much taller when she runs. So um so yeah, those were the those were the big uh things. Like I said, I think Shakari had the most impressive performance. Talu looked really good as well, her rhythm looked good. Um I'm looking to see who's gonna recover going into tomorrow with the semifinals and the finals uh, shortly after. Um for right now, I think my picks, I mean, Shakari is, I mean, uh, Sharika Jackson is obviously out. I mean, um, I didn't really have anyone to replace, <clears throat> to replace uh, Sharika, but, you know, just based on the prelims and what I see, I think it's, you know, again, it's going to stay at Shakari. She has, she's basically, this is hers to lose. Um, I think Talu can possibly stick her nose in there. Uh, Shelly Ann, I think I would have to see her run a nice 10-8 
to, to convince me that she's in good shape because I think that the winning time for this is going to be damn near like 10-7 or maybe like a 10-6 if they really like had that competition. I think Sharika dropping out definitely lowered the field, but someone has to rise to the occasion to occupy that field. Um, we also have the other Jamaican athlete. Um, I keep forgetting her name, but she trains at MVP. Um, she did really well. You know, she looked really explosive. There's a lot of sneaky athletes in here that could take advantage of the fact that Sharika is no longer running in that race. So only time will tell, to be honest with you. There were a lot of national records set to qualify um, into the semifinals. So only time will tell. Um, hopefully I'm able to, to, to check out the semifinals and give my kind of feedback and take on it. But that's pretty much what I see. Sharika, not, not Sharika, excuse me, Shikari. Um, I saw Titi Terry. She looked cool. Um, but again, she looks very stiff and tight in those last 20, 30 meters where I feel like a lot of the other athletes are going to start to separate from her uh, to, to go get some medals. So only time will tell. I think it's going to be, like I said, Shikari. I think it's going to be uh, Melissa going to be in there. I think Talu's going to be in there. I think Shelly and Frazier Price is going to be in there. I think Daryl Nietzsche is going to be in there. I think um, we have... Um, Julian Alfred is going to be in there. We have uh, Dina Asher Smith is going to be in there. And then it's just going to be sprinkled with a couple other athletes that um, earned their way to those positions. So I can't wait to see it. Um, let me know in your comments what you thought of the round one um, and if your predictions changed based on what you saw. But like I said, I think it's going to be pretty consistent. We're going to see who sneaks in there and who earns himself a medal. So thanks, guys. Thank you guys for watching. This is the Brown with Trackers. Check out my other videos and my predictions and see if yours align up as these events go along in the Olympic trials or excuse me for the Olympics. I'll see you guys soon. This is D Brown with Trackheads. Peace.